Back there is the Bible study guide, like I said. Tonight, uh, we're going to start in Luke chapter 6, verse number 38. Luke chapter 6, verse number 38. Amen. Let me turn there. Luke chapter 6, verse number 38. Amen. We've been learning on Wednesday nights, uh, been going through a study, uh, back to the basics, just learning of the basics of the Christian life. And I always like to just cover these, even uh, once uh, every so often in a church, I believe we need to remember the basic things of the Christian life. Sometimes we get where we, uh, we're looking so much for deep things from the Word of God that we forget even sometimes the simplest things. And so it's always good to be reminded. And so I enjoy studying the basics because also you meet people that ask you these simple questions. Uh, we talked about salvation, uh, the, the very first lesson. And I've had even people uh, recently ask about leading people to the Lord. Take those lessons, and, or if you maybe uh, didn't get that lesson, let me know, and I can get you the study sheet there. Uh, because these are questions that sometimes are even asked of you by people out in the world, maybe uh, when, when you're at work about what is salvation or baptism and uh, what do we believe about our money and, 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 the Lord, and the communion and things like that. And so take heed, write these things down, study these things, so that way when you're asked, uh, you can know for yourself how to give an answer to every man. Uh, but it's also good just for ourselves to learn and know what God's Word says on these subjects. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, the Bible says, we're going to read this verse, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. This is a great promise from the Word of God, a great promise concerning a Christian and his money. Tonight we're going to learn about stewardship. What does God say about the basics of stewardship in the Christian life? Last week we learned about separation, a great study, but this week we're going to learn about stewardship, about what God says about our money in the Christian life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. God, just ask that you please be with us. Help us, Holy Spirit of God, to learn something. How excited that I am for the lesson, Lord. I love getting to teach the Word of God. And Lord, things that sometimes, Lord, that I'm reminded of, or sometimes things that maybe I did not see from the Word of God that I can help and give to God's people. I pray that, Holy Spirit, tonight we would learn from your Word. I love doing that, Lord. I just pray that you'd bless. Lord, may you give us an appetite for the Word of God, Lord. Thank you so much for your people, Lord, being faithful to your house tonight, Lord, as many have been to work, many have been out uh, and about, Lord, taking care of things, many have been at home. Lord, whatever the case is, Lord, they've come here tonight and they've been faithful to you. I pray that you would bless them for that. Lord, would you help them to know that that's not in vain. Thank you, Lord, for the children that are here, Lord, and their love for you. Pray that you'd help them, Lord, as they hear the Word of God, that you would increase, Lord, their faith. Uh, for those that are saved, for those that, Lord, are not saved yet, Lord, as you're still working on their hearts, may the Word of God, Lord, continue, Lord, tonight to uh, soften their hearts towards the gospel and give them that clear understanding. Thank you, Lord, so much. Pray that you'd bless in all that we do and say, Lord, as we seek to honor and glorify you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, like I said, is a good verse from God's Word that you can use uh, to claim God's promises. Uh, we talked uh, not too long ago about prayer uh, and, and walking with God. And in prayer, I don't know if you've made a habit of it or if this is something that you do, but in, in your prayer time when you pray and you're asking God for needs, it's good to find verses that you can claim and repeat to God because God gave you His Word. And God gives you promises as a Christian, what, you, what God will do if you do for the Lord. And so this is one of those things that when we give, every time we take an opportunity, we give on Sundays or like tonight, I took an opportunity to give people a chance to give because every time you give, God is taking note of it. Every time you put money in those offering plates, God takes note of every dime, every penny, every dollar, every cent. Because God is going to give that back to you. Look at what it said. Verse 38 is the command, give. And then the promise is, and it shall be given unto you. So God gives us a command to give. And then he says, in return, God will give back to you. Look what God, talk, what God explains. He says, good measure. So God will give it back to you in good measure. Pressed down and shaken together. And running over, I love to think of that. Have you ever uh, gotten a chance to take like a diet soda and you put the, uh, 
Mentos in there. You ever, anybody ever done that? Oh, man, let me tell you, that is the funniest thing to do. Uh, it, it, what it does is you put the diet soda there, you put the Mentos in, and then you very quickly screw the lid on, and then you run. <laughs> and it, it just, there's a reaction in the chemicals, and uh, so I don't recommend, I don't know what happens if you would drink Mentos, or drink diet soda and then eat the Mentos. I don't know if that would be the same thing, but don't try it. <laughs> but you put the Mentos in there, and what happens is it just begins to fizz. You see it, and all of a sudden it builds so much pressure that it just blows up, and it just comes out, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, Kids, don't try that at home, please. Sorry, I didn't mean to give your, your kids those ideas, parents. I apologize. <laughs> Miss Aurelia is looking at me like, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> but I, I, I think of that when I think of this verse, how that God says it will be, you, when he gives back to you, it will be in good measure. It will be pressed down and running over and shaken together, God says. And so it reminds me of that, how that when God gives back to you, it's going to be so much more. But then look, it says, shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. So God says God will give back to you as much as you give to Him. The Bible talks about if you sow sparingly, then you'll reap sparingly. And so how you give to God determines how much God will give to you. So if you say, God, I'm going to trust you with this much, then God will give that much back to you. And God gives a little bit more. But sometimes Christians think, well, maybe sometimes we see other people blessed and things like that. We have to determine how much do we give to the Lord. That's what the offering is and tithe, and we're going to talk about that tonight. But however much you're willing to trust God with, God will give that much back to you. Uh, a steward, when we talk about stewardship in the Bible, a steward is one who is a house manager. He is an overseer by extension of a fiscal agent, a governor. In other words, God is the owner of everything. God owns it all, amen. That's why I said in this church, God is the biggest giver because God owns everything, amen. Everything you and I have, everything we own, the clothes on our back, even to the children that we raised, those are a gift from the Lord. God owns it all. And so God is the owner. We are a steward of what God gives to us. And so as a Christian, we have to get a mindset about giving. Giving is it, The mindset about giving is that God owns everything. It all belongs to God anyway. When God asks you to give back to Him, God's asking you to give to Him what He's entrusted you with. Sometimes we get selfish and we think, well, it's mine. No, it's God's. Amen. Everything belongs to God. God gives it to you to be a steward to take care of faithfully. God talks about an uh, unfaithful steward. God talks about the unjust steward. And for those in the Bible, there are, there are illustrations that the Lord gives us of those that took what God gave them and misused it, and God punished them for it. So God gives you, as a Christian, God gives you an opportunity to be a steward of His money. And so we have to take that money and decide what are we going to do with it. Are we going to use it for ourselves or we use it for the Lord? And it's not just talking about money. Money is dealt with mostly in the Bible, but it's also about our time. It's also about the things that we have, our cars, our, all of those things belong to God. We're a steward over all of that. Everything that is in our possession truly belongs to the Lord. And it's just been loaned to the believer for his use while on this earth. God has graciously given time, talents, and financial means to man that he might be the steward over during his lifetime. David said it best this in 1 Chronicles 29, 14. He said, But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. So, and then 1 Corinthians 3.23 is a good verse. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6.20, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. And so again, just verses to clarify how that everything that we have truly belongs to the Lord. And so just remember that what you have belongs to God, and, and that gives you a mindset as well that when you give, that God can give back to you. See, sometimes we think, well, God is, isn't, I don't know if God can supply my needs. Whatever you have, God gave to you to begin with. So God can give that back to you and that much more, amen? Be willing to trust God. It all belongs to Him, amen? Now, that is the reason for stewardship. I'm sorry, that's number one. The, that is the reason for stewardship. The reason for stewardship 
is because it belongs to the Lord. It all belongs to God. God asks us to give back to Him what He has entrusted us with to see if we will be faithful. God is testing you. God is giving you a test on this earth when you tithe and every time you take an advantage and give back to the Lord in the offering plate or even when you give back to the Lord of your time and of your talents, that is God giving you an A+, saying, good job. That's what God wants to see. And then God in return blesses you for it. How many times uh, I remember when I was growing up, uh, I took a test, and if we got a certain grade, you know, mom and dad did certain things, you know, we got ice cream or we got to get pizza, you know, things like that. I don't know if any, uh, if any of you ever had something like that. Or how many of you remember when you could take your uh, report cards to Pizza Hut, and if you got all a certain grade, you get the little personal pans? Oh, I loved that. That was great. And that was an encouragement. <laughs> I was like, I'll get good grades for pizza, amen. I won't get good grades to pass my class. I just wanted the pizza. And so... A lot of times, that's how we are with the Lord. God says, I will give back to you if you'll do well with what I've given to you already. And so as we do well with what God's, as we're a steward of what God's given to us, then God says, in return, I'll bless you for that. Now, the requirement for stewardship. That's number two. The requirements for stewardship. So what does God say? We, how, how should we be a good steward? What are, what are those things that we can do to be a good steward that God's looking for? Letter A is to bring the tithe. Malachi 3.10 is a good verse. The Bible talks about bringing all the tithes into the storehouse. So the first thing we can do being a good steward is to tithe. That word tithe is talking about a tenth. It's a tenth of everything that we're blessed with. God wants us to tithe on that. Uh, as we saw in Genesis where Abraham even tithed to Melchizedek, the high priest, uh, and, and Jacob gave a tenth. He promised God, he said, God, if you'll bless me, I'll give you a tenth of everything. And so tithing has been going on since the Old Testament, and it continues as a command in the New Testament. Uh, Paul says, bring ye, uh, or, or uh, Malachi says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. And then Paul talks about in Corinthians how that the, uh, to, to, the, to not lay up the gathering, but on the first day of the week to give. And so again, a tithe is simply 10% of everything that God gives to you. Okay, so for instance, uh, when I had my birthday, I was given a $30 gift card. I tithe on that gift card because that is an increase to me. Every time I'm given, every time at Christmas time, Christmas time comes around and I get a gift from somebody, and I try to count up and I try to make sure that I tithe as much as I can, because those are all increases to me. That's what God wants. Every time you're increased, God wants to give you to give a portion of that back to Him. Now, again, most of the time our increase is in money. Now, sometimes our increase is by other means, but most time our increase is in money. And so that's why money is, so, is dealt with so much through the Bible, is because a lot of times we deal monetarily. In the, in the New Testament days, they did not have, obviously, a paper dollar, uh, but they had financial means, gold, silver, uh, things like that, that they gave back to the Lord. Some sold their land that they have to take the money given and, and give to the Lord to tithe on that, and things that they did. So God wants every person to tithe. That's the minimum. Tithing is said, that shows your honesty to God. If you're willing to tithe, that shows your honesty. That shows that you're willing to be a faithful steward. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16.2 is that verse. Uh, let me give that to you. It says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him. And so God says uh, the principle in 1 Corinthians there is to give on that first day of the week, Paul said, to give on that day. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 is a good promise. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. So when you're willing to honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase, then God says he'll give that much more back to you. What a great promise, amen. Every time I give, I can give cheerfully. Now, remember how in the Bible says, God loveth a cheerful giver, and we're going to go over that. But you can give cheerfully, knowing why. Because when you give, God will give back to you. God will bless you for that gift that you give to him. Amen. No other religion, 
no other, all of these false religions and things out there, none of them will give you the promise that God gives you to, from His Word, and that's that He will bless you for giving to Him. What a great God. You know, God does not, God does not have to do that for us. Isn't that a blessing? God does not have to. He does that because He loves us. Amen. Why should we keep what belongs to God, but then why keep when God will bless you anyway? Sometimes we, you know, first, why would you keep it? It belongs to God anyway. But then why would you keep it when God says He'll bless you for it and give you more than what you gave Him? You can never outgive the Lord. Now, the Bible teaches us where to bring the tithe. Obviously, we know it's into the storehouse in Malachi 3.10. That is the local church today. The church is the storehouse that is illustrated there. You are to bring the tithe here. Sometimes people get confused and think, well, I can tithe to that TV evangelist, or I can tithe to uh, you know, the uh, man of ministries, or I can, tithe, I can send. No, you bring your tithe to the local New Testament church. Why is that? Because God has designed that God's people are to pr uh, take care of, are to provide for their local church. God does not want you to give to the next church down the road. Now, if you do give, that's not wrong, but that's not to be your tithe, as we'll see later on. The tithe is to be given to your local New Testament Baptist church. That way, God can bless you for giving to His church when you tithe. Because God says, bring to the storehouse. This is where God wants to take care of. If, if everybody tithed to somewhere else, we'd have to shut the lights off because we wouldn't, ha we wouldn't be able to turn the lights on. Amen. If I tithe to Riverside Baptist Church because, well, I've just been there ever, you know, my whole life, I just decide to tithe. I'm a member here, but I'll just tithe back there. That, that, that's not right. God won't bless me. God says when we are members of the local body to tithe to our local church. So don't uh, think that, you know, God says you can give to this or the media ministry or charities and all of those things. Now, those are not wrong to give to, but the tithe belongs to your local church. That's according to God's Word. Now, wherever reference is made to the place of tithing in the Bible, it's always at the church. Now, we're going to keep going here. Uh, a good verse, Matthew 23, 23, talks about that. You can write that down. But we're going to go uh, letter A. Uh, we're going to go to letter B. Now, first was to bring the tithe. That's the first thing, to be a good steward of what God has given to you. If you want to be a good steward in the sight of God, bring the tithe. Next, you give an offering. What is an offering? An offering is anything that is given to the Lord above the tithe. Anything. A lot of times in churches, uh, they think, well, missions and offering are different, and that's not true. Offering is anything above a tithe. Now, we designate it for missions, but that is an offering because it's above the tithe. God says anything above that initial tithe, that initial 10% that you give, whether it's a dollar, whether it's a quarter, whether it's a penny, that is an offering to the Lord. Anything above that, whether it goes to, we have different funds. You can give to the missions fund. My wife and I, we give to that. Uh, you can give to the building fund. Uh, sometimes churches do like a, a, a chair fund where they're raising money for chairs or, you know, anything outside of your 10%, your tithe that you give is an offering to the Lord. Now, what does God say about an offering? I'm going to give you some things there. Under letter B, there's some little hyphens there. What does God say about an offering? In 2 Corinthians 9, 6, He says to give bountifully. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now God says you can give whatever kind of an offering that you want. An offering in the Old Testament was a free will offering. It was however much you wanted. But God gives us an illustration in 2 Corinthians 9, 6. He says, if you'll give an offering bountifully, then God will let you reap bountifully. So, you know, now sometimes we're not always able to give a lot. I know my wife and I, uh, when we just started and just got married and, you know, you're in love and then all of a sudden you come back and then the finances hit you and you go, oh, wow, we have to pay bills. <laughs> you know, sometimes things get tight. But as we've uh, gone in our marriage, we try to give more. Why? Because I want to keep giving more to give more bountifully to the Lord so the Lord can bless me more. Now, 2 Corinthians eight twelve is the next thing. God says, give willingly. 
It says, For if there first be a willing mind, it is an accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. In other words, don't view an offering as something as I, you know, I just, I just have to give. You know, God says, give willingly. Don't, you know, the pastor, uh, and no pastor does, but a pastor should not have to say, you know, come on, we need to give, we need to give, you know, and make the people feel like they, it, well, we just have to give. No, it should be a willing thing. God says, give willingly. Give of your own free accord. Say, God, you know, I love you and I just want to give to you, Lord. You blessed me with an abundance here. I'm going to give to you. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 is the next thing. Give cheerfully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So God says He wants us, when we do give an offering and we give our tithe, give cheerfully. Give, be excited about being able to give. Lots of times some people, I, and I've watched it because uh, I at church there and then, and, and then I was in, uh, at my, where my dad's a pastor, I sat on the pulpit and sometimes you watch people give. <laughs> or... You know, they throw it in there. You know, just different faces. It's funny. You want to see what, uh, see how sometimes people give. You come sit on the pulpit and you watch. You know, it's like pulling teeth. And, uh, and I know I gave one time and I, and I had to catch myself. I was like, oh, Lord, that hurts. And the Lord reminds me, give cheerfully. God says he wants us to be cheerful in giving. Why? Because God says, remember, I'm going to give back to you anyway. God says, I own it all. I'm going to bless you for giving. Don't, don't give with a sorry attitude or give and say, well, Lord, uh, uh, I guess I have to give. No, be excited. Say, all right, Lord, I'm giving to you. Now you're going to have to take care of my needs. Amen. Say, Lord, I'm going to give to you. Now can you please bless? God says to prove him. So that means when you give in this offering, amen, and I love, being, and I love to give. Every time I give to the Lord and I put something in this offering plate, I tell the Lord, I say, all right, Lord, now you have to keep your part. I keep God at it. I, take, I tell God, I say, all right. I write that on there. I write down, Lord, I'm giving this much to missions and this much to tithe. And I say, okay, Lord, now you've got to keep your end. And I watch during the week. Because God says he'll open the windows of heaven. We'll see that in the later. God says he'll open the windows of heaven. So I watch. Where's God going to give to me? How's God going to bless me this week? Because God promised he would. God says be excited about it. Go throughout your week going, all right, Lord, I gave to you. How are you going to bless this week? Sometimes now it doesn't always come in money. Sometimes God blesses you in different things. God blesses maybe in a bill being paid. You didn't know about it. When I was in a college, I'll give you a good, uh, a, a good, a good illustration. I remember I... Uh, I was I, I tithed every week and I and you know and, and in college you know money's tight you're paying the college bill and paying all of that and they uh, they uh, at the church there they wanted to put in new lights they had these old chandeliers and things just took up so much energy and all this they wanted to go to this fancy LED it's brighter all this stuff you know and so pastor was like I really think it'll help the church and so we he said but we're not going to take a loan we're going to pay cash and so people just gave. So I volunteered. I'm a college student, you know, I'm not, I don't make a lot. And I was like, I'll give $200. And I went, <laughs> you ever wonder, you go, oh, why did I say that? I put my foot in my mouth. But I just felt like the Lord wanted me to do that. And I was like, Lord, are you sure? I said, well, maybe I ought to go back. And God says, when you say something, don't go back on it. I said, all right, Lord. I said, I have no idea where I'm going to get $200 from. I said, but I'll give it when you give it to me. And so I worked, you know, and I continued to give my tithe, and I did not have a lot of money. And uh, I had, and it came down for the, they, and what they did is they set a big old barrel out right in the middle underneath the pulpit, this big old barrel. And uh, they said, all right, when, you, when the piano plays, everybody come down and give. And so people came down and, you know, and they would put that. So it came to that night, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know where in the world. I mean, it's like Sunday afternoon. It's coming Sunday night. I still, I'm like, Lord, I've been giving to you faithfully. I've, I've worked hard. I've been trusting. I don't know where it's coming from. And then my boss, uh, I worked uh, as a part-time. I worked for a guy that he, uh, I helped him like strip and wax floors and stuff like that. And I had forgotten like a month ago, that I had done this job for him. I worked like 12 hours, six, six at night to like six in the morning, and I'd forgotten all about it. He walks up and he hands me a check, and he says, here you go. And I was all excited, and then I was like, oh, man. So I look at it, guess how much it was for? Oh, you better believe it. And a little more. <laughs> so I was, I was sitting there thinking, woo, 
Woo! Praise the Lord. God blessed. Amen. And I wanted to give it to the Lord, and God gave me a little extra. So I was excited about that. Hey, when you're a college student, you don't have much. That means a lot. <laughs> Amen. That $50 means you have five bucks to go to McDonald's and get a chicken snack wrap with a large fry and a dollar Sprite. And uh, the chicken snack wraps were a dollar, and then the large fry, never mind. Anyway. <laughs> I had it down to a science, brother, amen. When I got off of work, that was my meal. Chicken snack wrap uh, with ranch. And none of this grilled nonsense. No, 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 grilled. Fried, amen. Give me a fried piece of chicken, amen. My wife is getting all this grilled. I'm like, no, I want a crunch. <laughs> you know, I don't want to feel like I'm, you know, chewing gum. You know, nah, amen. So I got the good stuff. Anyway, get off of that. So give cheerfully amen be excited about when you get an opportunity to give to the Lord because God will give back to you and then next another principle in giving mark 12 44 give sacrificially that's that last hyphen underneath letter B give sacrificially it says for all they did cast in of their abundance but she of her want did cast in all that she had even all her living this is a story about a widow who she cast in two mites and two mites back in those days was not even like a penny compared to, to what we have. But she had two mites to give to the Lord. And Jesus was standing in the back of the auditorium of the tabernacle uh, that the Jews worshipped in. And he was watching all these rich men just give and cast in everything they had and was watching them just fill the plate up. And then it comes by this widow and she gave two mites. And she was looked over by everybody else, but Jesus saw that and he told his disciple, she gave more than everybody else. Because everybody else gave because they had it, but she gave and trusted the Lord sacrificially. She said, God, your command is to give, and I don't have much, but I'm going to trust you. And she gave. And God says the principle is there when you give sacrificially. Sometimes you're not going to know where it's going to come from. How's God going to meet my needs? You won't know. But when you give because God commands it and you sacrifice for God, God sees that and blesses you more abundantly. That's why I said God is the biggest giver because you may not give the as much as the next person does, but when you give what you have, that's what God takes pleasure in. That's when God gets a smile. God doesn't smile at the millionaire that just gives $100 here and there because he wants to show off to the church. God blesses the little widow that doesn't have much that says, Dear God, I've got to trust you. You've got to take care of my needs. That's what God watches. Amen. Sacrificial giving is blessed greatly by God in the Bible. You can look in 1 Kings 17, verse 8 through 16, is a good story about how a widow gave to the man of God when he told her to give, and she, didn't, she had one little meal left. And he said, you give it because God commanded it, and God gave her a cruise of oil that never went empty. God says, sacrificial giving does not begin until a person first gives himself to the Lord. The Christians in the churches of Macedonia in the New Testament were perfect examples of those who gave sacrificially. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 5, and I'm going to read it to you. 2 Corinthians, verse 8, 1, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 through 5, talks about these, the churches of Macedonia, and Paul is telling the Corinthians about them. And it reads, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. The churches of Macedonia were kind of like you can compare to you and I. They were not wealthy people. The churches of Macedonia, when Paul would go, they were common people. They did not have much. And the Bible even says that some of them were in deep poverty. They were in deep poverty. You know, you know it's, it's poverty when you're in deep poverty, the Bible says. And God says that they still gave Paul said he, they still gave to us. And he said because of that, it abounded to the riches of their liberality. God gave to them even more so because of sacrificial giving. 
So as I said, give bountifully, give willingly, give cheerfully, and give sacrificially. What a joy it is to give. Amen. Now, uh, number three, the rewards for stewardship. Giving to God is not a gamble. It is not a get-rich-quick scheme either. But some, when you give to God, you're not gambling, saying, well, I, it, uh, maybe God will bless me. No, God will. But it's not a get-rich-quick get get scheme. There we go. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme either, where you think, well, when I give to God, all right, God, I need a million dollars. Oh, God doesn't work that way, amen. I've been waiting for that million dollars, and uh, if you get it, let me know. Tithe, amen. That's 100000 We could pay off half. No, we could pay off a little more than that. So I don't know, something like that. We're going to pay off a bunch of things, amen. So, uh, But no, it's, it, it, the Lord will give to you, but it's not also at the same time, don't be looking for God to give you a million dollars, or some people look for God to take care of all of, their, all of their debts. God gives to you, but only as according as you give to Him. The believer's giving should not be based on whether or not God blesses him, but it's because God commands him to give. So don't base your giving on say, well, the reason I give is because God blesses me. Our heart should be because God asked me to give. That's a willing heart. That's a humble heart that says, you know what, God, I don't, uh, I don't deserve to be saved, but thank you for saving me. I'm going to give to you because you asked me to give. God says, in return, God will bless you. Sometimes Christians give and they say, well, I, I give only because God will bless me. But God says, don't have that attitude about it. Have the attitude that because God asked you, He didn't have to, he didn't have to uh, come and die. He didn't have to do all that He does and give us all the blessings. And when He asked us for something simple, we should say, you know, Lord, I'll give it just because you asked it. Like Job, where sometimes you're not always going to see the blessings of God. You're not always going to see how God is doing it. And so sometimes Christians are tempted to think, well, maybe God isn't coming through. Because, well, I don't see right now the blessings of God. But you, like Job, have to have the integrity that says, I don't give. If, if God decides to bless me or not, I'm just going to give because God's worth it. So that way, one day when you don't see, you go, well, I don't really see how God's taking care of me, but I'm going to give because he asked me to do it. That's when God knows. That's when God will test, amen, the, the steward. God promises, though, several blessings for giving. God says he will bless you for giving and for being a wise steward over what he has given. What are those blessings? Real quick, we'll go through these. Letter A, the Bible says, and you won't be able to write it all on there. That's why I gave you the verses, but like this one, letter A, open you the windows of heaven. Malachi 3.10 says, when you give, God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Letter B, God says, he'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. That's in Malachi 3.11. So God says, first, He'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. It doesn't say He'll just drip you out. Amen. God says He'll pour it on you. Amen. You won't be able to know. You won't be able to hold it, the Bible says. Your cup is going to run over. Amen. God will pour you out a blessing, but then also God will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. When you give to God, it also puts a hedge of protection about you from the devil. God will rebuke the devourer. You know why? Because that's the curse. That's the opposite. When we don't give to God, God says you are cursed. God, gives, God lets the devil take some things from a Christian when a Christian's not willing to give what God asks. Letter C, treasures in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, God says there'll be treasures in heaven. So not only will God bless you on earth, but every time you give, God keeps a record, and in heaven He lays up for you treasure. And he, so you're not only making an investment here on earth, you're laying up, like I talked about Sunday, a spiritual investment. One day in heaven, God's going to look at you and say, here, you gave so much, here's all the treasure. You're making a spiritual investment with your money. Amen. A lot of people sometimes get discouraged about giving and think, well, I don't know what it's doing. Know this, when you get to heaven, you'll see every cent you ever gave. Amen. God says you won't uh, outgive him. Amen. God won't be in debt to anybody. Amen. Then letter D, it says, causes, uh, causes through us thanksgiving to God. 2 Corinthians 9, 11 through 12. When we give, it will cause you to be even more thankful. You can always tell a thankful Christian by whether or not they're a giving Christian. You can always tell how much you are thankful to God by how much you give to the Lord. Not just money, 
but how much you give of yourself, how much you give of your time, and how much you give of your money. God says you can tell your thankfulness to Him. When you give what you have, it comes from a thankful heart. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9, 11 through 12 is that verse. Now again, it's not saying if you don't give as much as the next person, they're more thankful than you. That's not what that's saying. It's saying when you give what you can and you sacrificially give what you have, it may not be as the brother that's a millionaire, but he may not be as thankful as you are, even though he gives more. Thankfulness is not determined by the amount, but it's determined by the sacrifice. Then letter E, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. Plenty there means enough. God says he'll fill your barns with enough that you need. And then God says, as we saw that verse, he'll press it down and run it over, and then more so. But Proverbs 3.10 is that word, that verse there. That's a promise that God gives you. Now, take those promises, like I said, in prayer. When you give each week, you tell God, God, I gave to you. Now, I need you to please bless. And God says, your barns will be filled with plenty. Amen. Now, none of us have barns physically. God's not talking, obviously, about that. Amen. Some of us have barns. Amen. But, uh, uh, you know, if, it's not saying if you don't physically have a barn, God won't fill it because you didn't give God a barn to fill. No, it's not that. God's talking about your needs, your life, and your wants. God says you'll be filled with plenty. It means your cupboards will have enough. Amen. You'll be able to eat. God will provide the food. You'll have clothes to wear. God says you'll make, He'll make sure you have shoes on your feet. Amen. God will provide everything you need. Amen. Plenty. Now, there are more blessings that God gives in, in the Word of God, but there's so much more that God says. It, 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 we couldn't cover it all tonight, but let it be sufficive to say that you just can't outgive God. Just let it be that enough to know that when you give, you don't understand what you're investing in. <laughs> it's the best investment you've ever made. Amen. No other investment will give you such a great return. Now, giving unto God is part of the Christian's worship. Psalms 96, 8, and we'll be done. Psalms chapter 96, 8. It's part of the Christian's worship. Another aspect of giving that sometimes is overlooked is that when you come in the New Testament, when they came to the temple, they came with an offering. When they gave that, it was because they were worshiping the Lord. When we gather and you give at church, it's the same illustration as they did in the Old Testament. We come and we give an offering to give glory to the Lord, to worship God. Psalms 98, 6, uh, I was at, or 96, 8, I'm sorry, 96, 8 says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before Him all the earth. And another, and then, uh, but it's part of your worship to the Lord. When you come and you worship God by giving, you're giving God glory by giving to Him. And then 2 Corinthians 8.8 8 and verse 24, it talks about it's also an expression of love to God. When you give, it's an expression of your worship. You want to give God glory and you want to tell God, I love you. Give you an, this is the last thing, the illustration. Tithing is an is, uh, proves your honesty to God. And offering proves your love to God. That's how you can kind of get an, an idea there. When you tithe, it proves your honesty to the Lord. When you give a little extra, it gives your love to the Lord. Because the tithe is what? That's the minimum. It's the minimum that God asks. The offering is above and beyond. God says you give however much you want to give of an offering. And so God says, that's out of your love for the Lord when you give that. Give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. So let's, uh, and, and so kind of, and I give you an understanding there, that's the basics of stewardship. Now, there's more to stewardship, proper making sure you budget right and making sure you pay things right and all of those things. But just know that when you give to the Lord, that's the start. If you say, well, I, I want to get out of debt, then you start by giving to God. Lots of, lots of people will tell you, well, if you want to get out of debt, organize your budget. No, the first step to getting out of debt is giving to the Lord. A lot of people have budgets but are in debt because they don't give to God. You give to God first, and then you take that next step, and you budget what you have after you've given what the Lord requires. Amen. And that's that first step 
uh, and there's lots of, uh, lots of stories how that people, uh, and I can give more to you, and again, we'll close and be done, uh, but lots of times how people have stories how that, you know, God helped them get out of debt. God helped them because they started by giving to the Lord, and God will give you the wisdom. God will give you the finances. God will bless you, the Bible says. That's why America is in such a curse, because America is slowly not giving to God. We're giving to everything else that's not that's anti-God, amen? So we start giving to the Lord, watch God bless you, amen? God will bless you above and beyond, I promise. And then, like we said, you give that tithe and that offering. Those are those two things. Now, when you see on the envelopes, there's other funds. Again, the tithe is the minimum. Those other things are all an offering. So it's not saying you have to give to every one of those. It's when you give anything above that tithe, that's an offering. Anything you put above it, that's an offering. Now, however much, if you want to give to all of them, God says do it. If you want to give to one, if you think that's what you can do, God says do it. You just trust God by faith. Giving is an act of faith. Just like when you trusted Jesus for salvation, every time you give, it's by faith. Because you have to trust an unseen God. Amen. And what a blessing it is. You prove God. Prove Him. Say, God, all right, here we go. I'm going to give. And you watch God bless you above and beyond. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to teach the Word of God. Lord, what a blessing that it is. Lord, how much I love, Lord, learning and studying the Word of God. And, Lord, and some of these verses, Lord, that I got to read and see, Lord, for myself as well, uh, that were new to me, Lord, that I enjoy studying. And, Lord, how I'm excited for Sunday's message already, Lord, from studying this afternoon. And, Lord, so much from the Word of God that if we'll just study ourselves and read, that you give us the wisdom, that knowledge. And, Lord, we get to see your promises. And, Lord, what a blessing that it is. I pray that you'd bless now, Lord, your people as we go home. Thank you, Lord, for their patience. Forgive me, Lord, for taking a little more of their time than normal. Lord, pray that you'd bless uh, them for it. Bless them as we, Lord, all decide to give, Lord, to you, and we decide, Lord, to trust you. Lord, for those that maybe, Lord, they don't give. Maybe, Lord, it's the first time that they've heard. I pray that, Lord, you'd give them the faith to give. Lord, give them the faith and the understanding, and, Lord, help them to be able to, Lord, as you did for me. Pray that your will would be done. We love you. We thank you. Bless all that we do and say. Bless as we go home, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen.